All right, what's happening, YouTube? It's a brand new 2018 C300 Mercedes Benz convertible. All right, we're going to do a quick review of this car today. As you can see, it's got that whole new front look that Mercedes goes for with the rounded lights. Uh, this is a basic convertible model C300. And basically, it is. A rear wheel drive, uh, entry level convertible coupe that Mercedes definitely has done some nice stuff with. Um, see there, all the exhaust and everything. And then, so, so, yeah, basically, this car right here is a C300 uh, automatic. Convertible cabriolet basically um, This car Mercedes has done some really nice upgrades to it even though it's an entry-level Mercedes it uh, Doesn't feel like an entry-level car it feels pretty upscale for what they're trying to do here uh, I'll Give you a quick view of the vehicle with the top down. We're gonna drop the cloth top right now You guys can see how long that takes One, two three four Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen top down action. So that's fifteen seconds, sixteen seconds, let's call it twenty seconds top down action, which is pretty quick. Um I'll give you a view of the vehicle here now. You can see it here. Top down. That's what she looks like on the car screen right now because uh, the key's not in it. So, basically, the car looks like um, You know, it's a very, very nice look. Very comfortable. You see the interior looking from the back side. The rear deck. The rear deck area is nice and clean. We're gonna go on and get in here and put up the top because it's starting to sprinkle a little bit down here, sunny South Florida. All right. All stationary, apply brakes. Okay, there we go. This is the top coming up. Let's see here how it comes out. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, so about 20 seconds. And we're going to go windows up everywhere here because we're going to try to get a little quiet from outside. Now, as far as the sports coupe, I wouldn't go so far to say sports coupe. It does have uh, some modes. It does have a sport and a sport plus mode. And then there's also an individual mode and the individual mode allows you to adjust each thing the way you want it you know you can have your air conditioning on comfort your engine on sport mode so on and so forth then you can come down to sport plus only and it has that all set up that way and it also gets in here you see it and then you can go to comfort and eco mode and save some gas so this is really more about a luxury convertible coupe that does the dual task of serving like a basic luxury sports coupe, but at the same time, really not giving up too much in the sense of luxury. Uh, you can see here, you got all your controls up top there, little sun sunglass holder, you have some lights here. You can turn on the light for doors. You have these nice um, mirrors and uh, sun visors. The material inside is very nice fit and finish the convertible top. Uh, one of the things that is nice is when you do this with the windows, all the glass comes down, no B pillar. So you have a really nice silhouette from the outside when you drive around with the top up and the glass down. It gives the car, even when the top is up, it gives the car a very airy feeling, makes the car feel like it's very spacious inside. And then you again, you have these nice cream seats. These seats are the standard seats. They're ventilated, but they're not power ventilated, meaning they don't come on with the AC. It does have the air scarf, 
which is nice at night when you're driving. It's a little chilly out and you got the top down. You can send up the glass and you have the air scarf blowing nice warm air around you. It has the nice controls on the side. This wood that Mercedes used here is phenomenal. I've only seen a wood like this in uh, an Audi A7 that a family member had. He had an A7, uh, I believe the 3.0 twin turbo. And uh, yeah, it had the same kind of wood. You have these kind of nice. The steering wheel feels good, multifunctional. You can scroll through some stuff, you know. It's my last trip there. Let's see. You got your phone controls. You have your navy. You have all that stuff. So basically, it's the same. It's pretty much an unchanged vehicle. I think 2017 was the remodel, and I think they just carried it over. I think the 2017s came out late this year, and the 2018s are pretty much unchanged. I think they're just going to be adding some more colors as the year goes on. I don't know if those will even be 2019s or if they're just those colors are going to only be available in some of the. Uh, uh, larger men's can uh, larger engine sizes so this car here has a four-cylinder turbo I don't know if you can hear this sounds more like an old-school diesel motor than anything exotic but when you get in on it in acceleration in the highway it definitely has a nice turbo sound four cylinder power you know where the, the motor's working it's not making any noise that you're not feeling at the wheels this car's rear wheel drive so it feels really light on its feet and what it doesn't have in horsepower it has an agility because it has a small motor and turbo set up in the front and it's rear wheel drive out back and the weight is pretty much evenly distributed and this is a mercedes chassis the vehicle performs phenomenally and i mean it's just very surprising that's what i think the bigger thing the beamers I've gotten in 428 Beamer convertibles, a Sport, rear-wheel drive, and an M package, all-wheel drive, and both of those vehicles felt like they were edgy from the minute you got in them. Even in comfort mode, that Beamer is always taunting you to do something crazy and do something fun. This Mercedes-Benz vehicle right here, it uh, it's it it pampers you when you are stuck in traffic and you want to drive slow, and when you get on it, it doesn't complain. That's the best way to explain it. Is it going to out hustle a 428? No way in the world. I don't think so. I think a 428 with the entry level sport line, which is about what this cost entry level C300 with, the, I believe this has the convenience package because it has the hands free door handles, so on and so forth. Um, I think that's the only thing this car has. Yeah, it doesn't have really anything else. Um, you can see down here, there's a lot of <laughs> deleted buttons. This is the power button for the radio. And, and I want to touch on this right here. If I have a complaint about this car, it's this right here. In the Durango, this operates the transmission once the car is in drive. If you keep your hand on it, there's no penalty. This is a mouse pad that operates that screen. And when your hand brushes across it the wrong way, if you're in radio mode or you're in one of the other modes, it may cause something to happen, like the music to change. And I really don't like that. This thing is, in this car, I would have rather got nicer wheels and got rid of this. You know, and I can't imagine what this car is like in Europe in a stick shift. Because I would imagine it's probably a hoot to drive in stick shift. This car does have the paddle shifters. And here's the thing. So I drive stick, and I like driving stick shift. My Mustang's a stick shift. I had several Honda Accords that were stick shift, and a couple of Integras when I first started out with Hoopties, and I was driving little BS cars, and I enjoy driving stick shift, period. You want to keep your kid from texting and driving? Buy them a stick shift car and only let them drive a stick shift car. Impossible to do. You understand? Besides that, they'll be having so much fun driving the car, they really won't care about the text message until they get where they're going. So that's that on that. Um, this car, if it was here, I don't think it's offered here in the States in a stick shift mode. So if it was offered here in a stick shift car, 
I think people would enjoy this car even more. But the paddle shifters do plenty on this car, so I can understand why they didn't offer a stick shift mode. So from a stick shift guy point of view, these paddle shifters do pretty good job. If you're not really in, big into stick shift and you miss driving a stick shift, or you used to have one at a point in your life and you wanna liven up the car a little bit and have some fun on your commute, that's definitely a, a very good tool. The down, it does rev match downshifts. It does take over an upshift. I haven't found a way to defeat that. I'm sure there is. Got to check a video or something like that. There's sure, I'm sure there's a way to defeat that option. But honestly, this is not a car you want to rev out too much. At around 4,000, 4,500, it sounds not the greatest. It sounds like you need another gear. And you kind of just want to grab that gear because when you grab it, you get that nice turbo rush where the car takes off a little bit, builds more boost, and then takes off again, and you kind of constantly feel like it's it's got that power when it really doesn't because it's only a four-cylinder. So uh, you also have these nice silver finish vents. You have this screen control area here, radio. I don't have anything plugged in here, so keep the vehicle like that because the vehicle sits for periods of time, so you have to reset everything. It is nice to always have your vehicle pop up on the screen. It's nice to look at. Even though this car is black, I'm sure I could configure the color. You know, dynamic selects. This is where you select. You select this here. And this is where you can tune your different settings. You say sport. Yeah, or comfort. So you got two options here, which is nice for an entry level vehicle. You know, you can turn the auto start, start off. You can put the climate control on engine put it in drive sport plus okay everybody's happy and you go back out and the back out button is here so that's nice but um let's see it tells you consumption you can look in here and go in there it gives you a nice chart and all that stuff let's see operator's manual i'm not going to go in there because that takes forever it gives you the time you can set vehicle settings so you know, when you plug your iPhone in, the controls come up on this screen. Again, this is not, if this one doesn't have CarPlay. I had a 2017 that had CarPlay in it. So I don't know why this one, new one doesn't have it. I got to ask the dealer basically what's the difference or if maybe I didn't set it up yet or it's, you know, some of these things you got to set up apps on them. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it, man. Without boring you out to death, this little C300 is good. Look forward to my videos driving it top up, top down. And I'll talk to y'all soon. Peace.